Hello everyone, welcome to my vlog. So today I have an um, amazing guest. Um, I'm, I'm super excited to um, interview you. You know, like I've been tracking you for quite a bit. I've been a big fan of your work. You're an amazing headshot photographer. And also you do um, a lot of real estate photography as well. But before I jump into all this stuff, my guest today is um, Vadim Davidov. I'm pronouncing this right. Same and way. I'm super excited to interview. Thank you for um, accepting my invitation. Um, we had a little bit of conversation back and forth, and um, I'm glad you agreed to do this interview because I've heard your names from so many people, and they recommend you to uh, talk to you. So I'm super excited that I'm, I, I got you. <laughs> so um, let's jump into those uh, questions and let's talk about hatchet photography. So. Um, could you tell me a little bit about your journey getting into this industry? Um, like, I just want to know how many years took you to kind of, you know, establish yourself, but also like, why did you choose hatchet photography? That's something what I really want to ask you because, you know, there's so many different genres of photography and then, you know, like hatchets are really specifics. And I know sometimes people have certain reasons why they're jumping into this particular you know industry so i just want to hear your story of of getting into this um and and then tell me you know why actually you pick the headshot photography industry like all my life when i when i grew up i was kind of entrepreneur and the, every time i create some different businesses and uh, also every time my hobby was it's a camera Okay. Like I, sh I shoot video, I shoot uh, stills, and uh, I always mostly enjoy shoot people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I moved to US maybe two and a half years ago okay. from Russia, St. Petersburg. And uh, when I moved, I start working with handyman work. Okay. <laughs> and then I create handyman company, but it always was pain ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I realized. I don't want to live like that. It's good money, but it's nothing else. And then I realized I want to do photography. Okay. When I start research, I start with uh, real estate photography. Okay. I kind of like it too. But then I find Peter Hurley headshot crew and I just love it. And okay. uh, uh, another part why I, I do headshots, it's a psychology part. Mm -hmm. Always I love to do... Uh, I love to uh, help people resolve their issues. And I was very close to jump to psychology university. Oh, wow, and, uh, okay. It's very, very close things. Oh, wow, okay. So you have a little bit of journey, same as me. It's, well, I've been a little bit longer in Canada, but I started kind of the same way, you know, working mm -hmm. constructions and then, but photography was always my passion and was always kind of uh, behind my back to kind of like well this is this is what I would like to do so tell me why headshots like did you do any other type of photography or you know you just jump in because it seems like you've been doing this for like so you've been doing this um, photography like before you even come to to the United States or like how I did this just for a hobby okay like very very rare and uh, I mostly did video shoots. okay but uh Right now, to be honest with you, I'm not thinking I'm a photographer. <laughs> Still. Oh, okay. Still, okay. <laughs> because in my imagination, photographer it's uh, like a people who create something. Okay. I don't know, like a. So why headshots? Big, did you did you thing. have it kind of? For me, headshots it's mostly kind of business, and uh, it's still I have some creativity there. Okay. And I feel like a headshots. It's a lot of people have stereotype about headshots. They think it's a picture. It's a. It's should, supposed to be beautiful, yes. but uh, for for me, it's only tool, and uh, this tool should work for you. Okay. And uh, I help people to create something what will work for you, for them in the future, and help them to get new job, to get new uh, opportunities, new connections. So Absolutely. What I do, and uh, right now I realize what else I can do. Like okay. when I, when someone have a amazing headshot, what what next? Uh, and I realize the problem. It's a huge problem. 
when you have an amazing headshot with amazing expression. Uh, when you show up on a networking meeting, you're not looking like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, the biggest issue, it's a trust. If you build trust online, somebody trusts you, mm -hmm. and then you show up and you look differently, you're just losing all this thing. You're losing all trust. And uh, right now I, I'm working with new program when I can help people to resolve this issue. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're just taking this whole thing to just completely another level. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. You know what? I never had a chance to, um, I never thought about it, but it, but you're absolutely right. And it's, it's so interesting that, you know, um, the headshot is the one thing, but, you know, as you said, you can create amazing image of the person and you can, you know, through the image, build the trust, but then what is the next step, right? And then, yes. Yeah. And I and, and it's also I think applying to uh, even like the movie stars nowadays, right? Like they playing those characters on movies and whatever, you know, some some shows, and then you know, like we kind of think that's the way they are, but you know, but sometimes it's not completely true, right? It's, yes. It's, it's, so and that's the, kind of the same. If you met them in person, you just uh, a lot of people they like oh. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit more secrets what's like what's your goal with this can you share some of those informations like you know what like I don't want to kind of like dig no, too much into it uh, but... right now I have a two people who sign up for my program I create the program mm -hmm. then I can uh, take person even if you have uh, but presentation online or offline mm -hmm. or if you already have a great presentation online but you have a poor offline mm -hmm. to be honest with you it's better to don't have any headshot or bad headshot mm -hmm. and then when you show up you look better and you start building because everybody have a stereotype and everybody know usually like 95 percent people they have a ugly headshots yeah everybody know it yeah <laughs> that's true when you create amazing headshot here's the we have a huge problem yeah <laughs> And a lot of headshot photographers, they not realize it. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a huge, because if you have a, like, let's say I should, I tell you right now, I create the gold. And then when you meet me, you will realize I'm not creating gold. Yeah. And uh, it's, I lose trust twice faster instead of uh, building that up. Yes, I have a kids here. That's okay. That's Sorry, fine. Man. That's okay. <laughs> One second. And uh, One second. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> she didn't care. Yeah, more Okay, they, they tried get more candies when oh. when they did they, they know how to when to approach you hey <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my kid is exactly the same way trust me like whatever is the moment where you know <laughs> it, i need to kind of do something he always like okay now is the time to ask for candy right <laughs> yeah yeah they know it perfect so, and, uh, yep. when you uh when you have an amazing uh, online presentation I I meet a lot of people like that mm -hmm. when they show up they think like I was 20 years old like a younger and I was looking better and mm -hmm. it's better to keep these pictures over there yeah but when they show up they like different people yeah I don't trust them because they already uh, make a uh, kind of they lying already mm -hmm. And people subconsciously, they make decisions less than one second about the person. And if you uh, show up somewhere, let's say we are politicians. My mm -hmm. target market is politicians. And uh, can you imagine if, uh, let's say, Hillary Clinton was a little bit more trustful mm -hmm. with her expression, with her face, and people can think, Okay, she may be getting better and better, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she can actually win the uh, campaign. Yeah. If you spend million 
of dollars on your campaign and if you're looking uh, not trustful on your uh, billboards on tv on person you just throw all this money away yeah and then my work right now to take these people and make them look, look more nicer and when i make them look nicer we figure out because let's say we have a tension on the mouth this tension like that when we have a tension our, like your brain tell you hey something wrong yeah this person holds something and uh, to remove all this tension to be confident because confident people they relax they mm -hmm. totally relax to remove this tension you have to work with your psychology problems yeah so have you have a chance to um, I, I've been actually talking about this book for like months now um, her name is Vanessa Van Anders and yeah, I know. Yeah, so she talks a lot about it, and I think that, you know, microphase expression, how she calls them, um, those are like super like important. And I think even um, like shooting headshots, like you want to eliminate those micro expressions, which you know sends the, the bad signals to the people. But yes. I never thought like you now taking this to another level that you train to people that you know it's also in real life you also have to kind of have this knowledge and those informations so you kind of like when you meet someone or you have I don't know meeting or your politician or whoever um, you maintain this this trustful kind of look right now that's that's super interesting and then I, I, I think you know like I, I, I was thinking a little bit about this mostly based on photography but I never thought that you know um, as you said, and I 100% agree with you that you're creating this stunning image of the person, and, and you you they look trustful, they look you know good, they look healthy, they look confident, and then they yeah. go to a meeting and it's like like a balloon which explodes in a second, right? Um, okay, so let's change the gear a little bit, um, and I would like to kind of talk a little bit about. Um, like we can continue on this, but who inspires you as a photographer? I know you're a huge fan of Peter Harley, and then I think you adopt some of some of these techniques and some of the stuff what he does. But do you have like a list of people who inspire you as a photographer? Let's say artists, where are you getting your inspirations from, or you just looking at this whole thing from completely different angle? To be honest with you, uh, when I saw Peter work. I first time saw uh, some uh, video on YouTube when he working with one light setup mm -hmm. and I was amazed because before I never like when I saw the great pictures I never thought it's uh, creating with lights mm -hmm. actually because I never thought about photography like a profession mm -hmm. and then when I saw the like a one light and how beautiful it is I was inspired so much <laughs> yeah and the uh, like a one one and a half year maybe one year and two months ago maybe one year and three months ago whatever uh, I uh, sent message through the uh, Instagram for Peter mm -hmm. and uh, I did headshot by myself with all my setup I mean with uh, it was uh, not strokes it was flashes okay I, I sent him picture and I said hey man how are you uh, should I join your crew? Because I have no idea about crew. I have no idea about headshots. Mm -hmm. I just take a first headshot in my life and I send it to him and I said, like, uh, it's worth it to me to join. Like, uh, should I uh, keep going on it? And he said, yeah, sure. It's like, it's a decent light and uh, he looks miserable. <laughs> 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 like, uh, who wanna uh, look at you like that? And uh, I said, great. And uh, after one year, he came here in Tampa, and uh, we hang with him, and I showed to him. Like uh, one year later, he we finally meet with him. Okay, perfect. So, could you tell me um, your process of creating a headshots? Like, what's what is so important for you, um, and what what you paying attention the most? Like, whenever you work with someone, what's the most important aspects of, of of headshot as I said uh, for me it's a tool and uh, I know photographers who are creating beautiful headshots 
with a beautiful light, beautiful retouching, beautiful background. I mean, it's it's a beautiful, it's a piece of art. <laughs> you can hang on the wall and the, it will be amazing. But for me, headshots, it's mostly a tool. And uh, I work mostly with business people. Okay. And uh, depends of the profession, depends of the target market. Like at first, when customer coming to me, we realize what target market you're looking for. And then we creating a image for this certain target market. That's oh. why it's important okay. because it's only tool for me. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I, I pay attention expression mostly. Okay. So when you got into this industry um, and you started shooting headshots, because you know, like I think everyone is going through this process of you know learning so it's not like you know you pick up the camera you get the lighting and you know you're good to go you you have to kind of learn all those little things here and there to to to, to know how to create good headshots so what what was the the, the biggest obstacles for you and, and the biggest challenges you have to overcome so you so now like you can create those stunning images uh, because I think you know like for me, headshots, it's been six years journey. Um, and I know the beginnings were horrible. Um, and then like, you know, like I think everyone, most of us going through the same process. Uh, but even now it's, 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 it's kind of interesting for me that, you know, we're creating those good headshots and, and people still have this kind of, I don't know, idea or concept that, you know, creating a good headshot is an easy thing, but it's not, right? Like we both probably know that, it's it's not as easy as it looked like, you know, because we see those shots and like, okay, it's just a headshot. But, you know, as I said, there's there's a lot of, lot of those little things which we have to pay attention. So what I want to ask you is, you know, what was the biggest challenges for you? Like when you got into this business and you got into shooting headshots, like what was the biggest thing you have to overcome to, to learn to do this properly? You know, when I was inspired very well, <laughs> By Peter, by competition, by headshot of the week, okay. I was I was enjoying. Be before I was a professional go kart racer, and okay. every time I'm enjoying to be in competition. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like uh, it's pushed me very very well. Okay. And uh, I I did maybe around 40, 45,000 selfies. Holy smokes. <laughs> And then I realized how to do lights, okay. how to create expression, how to pose, how to uh, change your camera height, okay. angles, and uh, all these things step by step I learned mostly on myself. Okay. Because I was, uh, I have a, like a most complicated thing for me was uh, to get someone on front of my camera. Even okay. if it's for free, for money, doesn't matter how. Okay. It was most problem for me. Okay. So, so how did you overcome this problem? What do you mean? Like, well, because you said that one of the most challenging things was to getting people in front of the camera, and you know, I I had the same problems, and I agree with you. So, did you had any like, how did you overcome this problem? That like, how did you start getting people at the front of your camera? Like, were you shooting for free, or you were just inviting family, friends? You know, like, what was the process of of kind? Because of, you know, you need, and I think also, and I'm gonna kind of like jump into this conversation a little bit more. Um, I, I think that you know the more people you shoot the more you learn right and the, the variety of different people you have at the front of the camera and also like from the psychological point like we know everyone is different right and you can have yes. five five people who kind of look the same but their personalities the the, the the kind of like the way they, they act at the front of the camera are different and you have to approach them differently right so the more we shoot the more we learn right and the variety of different so how did you like what was your solution for not getting people into the front of the camera? Like, how, like, how did you kind of overcome this? When I start offer them for free, <laughs> on the beginning I offer like, a, hey guys, can you come to me and I will do a headshot, and they feel no value. Okay. And uh, I, all my portfolio, I shoot all like it was my workers for okay. my construction, oh, for cool. real, okay. real, uh, relatives. Like my father, my wife, <laughs> everybody. Okay. 
So That's basically, the, whoever you could grab, right? Yeah, the, the funny thing is my father won Headshot of the Week like uh, with his picture, and my wife, she won Headshot of the Week. Oh, <laughs> so you're really good. Like, you, you could bring anyone. That's so, that. And uh, then when I start selling Headshots, mm -hmm. it was a problem too. I, I, I create discounts and try different things. Nobody don't want to buy it. Or even if you're selling something for cheap and you have a cheap customer and uh, he brings you a lot of uh, headache. Yes. And maybe I learn a lot from these kind of customers. Yeah. They give me a lot of headache, but I, honestly, I feel like when you not just uh, shoot more and you learn more, mm -hmm. when you got so hard customers, you learn a lot. I spent with one lady almost four hours to get decent headshot. <laughs> Yeah. And it was so complicated, to be honest with you, but I learned a lot, I learned yes. a lot, because w w when she, here we go again, Yeah. <laughs> when when she was laughing, she looks like a devil, Okay. when she smiles, she looks like a devil, and then we figure out with her how we can create something <laughs> when you not look like a devil, Yeah. <laughs> but she was a nice person. But the face and expression was not nice. And then we, after three and a half hours, we figure out how to do it. Yeah. And we finally got it. Yeah. So, and after these hard customers, I learned a lot. This is what I recommend to find not easy one, to find yes. hard one. Yes. Well, I, I you know what, I 100% agree with you. But also, you know what, I think what is interesting sometimes that, you know, like, whenever we have this hard client and I, I've been there too like don't take me wrong like I had clients which you know like you just pulling your hair out and like what 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 I'm what the hell I'm gonna do here you know like to make this work um, but it's but it's the best learning experience right and I think a lot of yeah. photographers nowadays they don't realize like well this those challenges and those things which makes this whole thing difficult those are the moments what you learn the most, right? And those kind of failures, those those like situations with you know like nasty clients, which I also had to go through sometimes, and I'm sure you've got that too. Um, that's where you your experience comes into place, and that's where you kind of like learning all those stuff, right? Yes, um, problem yeah. Problem is problem when another photographer met problems, they wanna like okay, I wanna shoot like this and just keep going. Yes, you know. Want to make my life easy, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, you have to jump from your comfort zone and do something what you not able to do yet. Okay. And learn, you know. Absolutely. So I want to point out one more thing which you have said, and this is something which um, I have a lot of discussions about this, and I want to kind of like you actually addressed this already, but I want to kind of put a little bit more light on this um, about free photo shoots because this is I'm sure you've heard that many many times a lot of photographers especially those ones who are starting off they they have this mentality like oh i'm never i don't want to shoot for free i want to have only the paid photo shoots um but we both both <laughs> so now we have another person to interview <laughs> it's emily <laughs> how are you doing yeah. middle one she, she didn't listen but... perfect so can you tell me about um, those free photo shoots? Do you think they're extremely important or this is something which, you know, we should kind of have a balance between paid photo shoots? I think especially at the, at the beginning, like I don't think people should even charge. Like, you know, if they, they're not 100% confident about what they're doing. Um, and then I also found that, you know, when you whenever you're doing the free photo shoot, even if you screw up, there's no obligations. You can always say, look, you know what, this photo shoot didn't work or whatever. And then you kind of off the hook. But if you have paid client, like you have to deliver because, you know, other than that, you're like, you screwed, right? And the reputation might go after you and, and you know, like might be more yeah. issues. So would you address this a little bit and s tell me a little bit more? What do you uh, think? Right now, I create program for coaching people, but also creating program for photographers. Mm -hmm. And in this program, I have a, a steps how you can uh, get new leads 
And the new leads, a lot of times, are getting from free. Like, I going to different uh, networking events. I do uh, expo. Like last a week ago, I went in the Fort Lauderdale, and we shoot uh, a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. And it was for free. But okay. the idea is, if you're thinking about money, money will not come to you. Yes. But if you think a little bit differently out of box, and if you just think about connections, mm-hmm. what it can bring to you, this brings you uh, money for you. Yes. So, and uh, it's two different things. If you just offer stranger, hey, I want to shoot you for free, and he like, don't see any value, but if you, uh, for example, uh, find some charity and you offer them, hey guys, I want to shoot your people for free and uh, they will be happy and uh, everybody will be happy. And especially if you say my price is usually a hundred thousand dollars, right now I do it for free, everybody will be a hundred percent more happy. <laughs> yes, that's true. And and you you will meet a high level people, like a, depends on your, your target market, but you have to go there where your people are and uh, shoot them for free, send them like a part of experience. Mm-hmm. On the beginning, I have a mistake. I did, I provide them like a full experience. Okay. And when they got full, full experience, they will never come back because it's not making it's, any sense. It's they done, already right? got everything. <laughs> yeah. But right now, when I'm smarter, I just give them bite a little bit and mm-hmm. then they coming back to me and <laughs> yeah yeah that's 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 a good point just kind of like make them smell the cake right and if you yes. want to eat it you have to come back and do this whole yeah. thing and don't think about money I, I i met a lot of people who said how much it costs like uh, to go there or how much they will pay me mm-hmm. i mean i'm not the richest guy in the world i need the money too but if i will start thinking about money straight i will never get money Yes. Well, and I think that's, that's, well, I think it's a general concept nowadays, right? If someone comes in and, and you know, the first thing, ask about the money, you automatically, like, it's just a red flag, right? Yes. Um, I had that, you know, experience actually yesterday where, you know, I had a bunch of um, phone calls with potential clients and, you know, like, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting that, you know, like, I know different people have different approach, but the money always should be at the very, very okay. end, right? Like, you know, you have to kind of see the value first and then kind of take a completely different path to, to get mm-hmm. to the money kind of thing, right? So I, I 100% agree with you. Um, but that's something also what I've learned throughout the process, right? It's not something which you can kind of get, you know, overnight, right? Yes. So I would like to ask you right now, let's jump into the gear part, because I know a lot of people want to hear about that stuff. Um, so, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's okay. But, but... So gear. Yes. Uh, when I started to shoot, I have a Canon. 5D Mark III and also I have a Canon 80D okay. video. But uh, to be honest with you, I can shoot the same quality of headshots on both cameras and it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. It's a okay. full frame crop. It's a one lens or second lens. Before I bought, like when I start, when I saw the great quality of work, I thought, okay, what lens they use? I, I have to buy the same lens. Mm-hmm. Like. For example, I bought, I have a 100 millimeters uh, macro 2.8, I have a uh, 7200, mm-hmm. uh, I have a 24 104. Wow. <laughs> I bought all these lenses because I thought it's all about lens. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing is, when you put like a great lens, like let's say 100 millimeters, it's mm-hmm. a great lens for headshot. When you use a Canon Mark III or Mark IV, and when you use Capture One, all these three things together, they honestly provide you great quality. Mm-hmm. I mean, and uh, but you also can have the same great quality with less expensive things. Like uh, if you have a 
50 millimeters chip, uh, 1.8 uh, lens, and uh, if you use a uh, crop sensor, it's a great setup. Mm -hmm. I know photographers who use it, and it's yes. a chip. You can buy Canon i, how it's called, T3 or i3. Okay. Like a lowest crop mm -hmm. uh, camera. Uh, camera, yeah. And you can create amazing headshots. Yeah, and then this is something also, and, and this is the main reason also I want to touch this 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 topic because you know, especially at the beginning of the process of, of you know getting into this industry, ninety nine point nine people think it's all about the gear, right? And then when you start learning, it's it's not the gear. There's this way more to it, um, and and this is again I want to like that's why I, I, I like I'm I'm pointing this out on every interview I have. To make people realize the gear is just a tool, right? It's, it's it's nothing, nothing less, nothing more. Like you know, you have to know how to how to use it, but it's not the the, the the main thing. So, so my question to you is like you know, kind of addressing what I just have said, um, because you have said like you you bought a bunch of different stuff. So, what was the your process to figure it out? Okay, you know what. Like this is the 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 set setup what I need and the setup what I'm going to be using for most of my work. Can you tell me a little bit about like you know how long it takes you to kind of figure this whole thing out, or you just kind of like learn from someone else and they kind of direct you like okay this is what you need and this is like pretty much um, all what 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 is necessary to do the headshot. I remember time when I bought the camera and uh, I didn't know what kind of lens do I have to buy. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time when I ask on the forums, all photographers was like, hey, you can't ask these questions first, you have to figure out what you want to shoot. Mm -hmm. But all beginners, they want to shoot like a subject yes. with blur, blur background. Yes. <laughs> it's the main reason and they don't understand how to do it. And, yeah. uh, it takes time for me to understand and right now like if you ask me what kind of lens should should i buy first mm -hmm. i would maybe say like a 24 to 70 2.8 mm -hmm. it's an amazing lens for almost everything yeah and if you buy this one lens you can shoot pretty much everything absolutely but i don't understand why people can't answer like that <laughs> yes <laughs> why you can just say hey go and buy 24 by 70 or 24 by 104 yeah and you can create amazing uh with 24 millimeters you can shoot kind of uh, landscape or something like that i don't know yeah uh, for 104 70 you can shoot portraits with blurry background yes so uh, when i bought all this gear and when i realized it's uh, very very similar <laughs> Yeah. It's nothing changed almost when I bought like a good camera, good lens, when I use everything is good. Like then I start to figure out it's all about light. Yeah. <laughs> when I learn light, when I nail light, right now I can shoot with my cell phone <laughs> yes. and get pretty decent image with nice light. Yeah. Like when I learn about kicker you see yeah. i can have a window and have a nice kicker yes yeah well yeah. It's, it's all about you yeah, understanding this whole thing right absolutely yeah and uh, to understand all this thing you have to just practice and uh, i have a uh with a headshot crew we have a wingy program right mm -hmm. now it's a team program okay. i have a wingy square work with and uh, i always tell them like uh, shoot yourself straight first of all you have to nail your lights then your uh, camera position, mm -hmm. and then your expression. A lot of people, they have a mistake, they start turning body, they start trying to create amazing uh, headshot. But every time when you add little thing, it's more complicated. Yes. And uh, your brain work this way, like uh, we see, like uh, right now, I don't know what I look right now. Maybe right now, first thing I, I watch like uh, eye defense for example but before i watch a lot of different things and i try build it right now it's going automatically because yeah. i already know it so and every time when you add something do it very very slowly yes like, let's say today or on this week we're training camera height 
and mm-hmm. don't care about expression, don't care about light, just do camera height. Mm-hmm. Or if you do lights, don't care about anything else. Yes. Well, I yeah, that's that's a really good point. Um, and I think sometimes we forget about it, right? Like we just want to nail all of it at once. Yeah. But we need to practice those those individual things, and then kind of master them, right? And I think that's why the, the headshots, they they they, way more complicated as people think because, like every everything has some kind of important role. You know, the height of the camera, the face expression, the lighting, the even. Like, like, there's so many different factors which you have to consider to create, you know, the balance between all those things and make this whole thing right. That it's, it's, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of work with so many different people to understand those, 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 those things, right? And uh, you have a like a camera settings, yes. less of settings, yes. battery, and. Uh, you have a lot of different things how you have to take care about light settings, what power, what power they are. Yes. And uh, it's destruction for new photographers. All these little things it's just destruct their brains and they stop thinking about customer. Yeah. But when customer or clients or any any for free people coming to your studio, it's most important to take care about themselves. And they usually it look like the photographer care about the quality. Yes. And people feel like it's quality for a photographer, not for actually customer. Yes. But you have to build real relationships with your customers, and uh, you can expectation very low from people, and yeah. when they see uh, the low quality of picture, they still can love it. Yes. And also, if you sometimes when when i create amazing like amazing headshot and first I'm like uh, mm, i'm not sure about my eyebrows <laughs> yes you know they pay attention to different things and and you have to uh, create a situation and atmosphere when you show them your confidence about this is amazing i told you <laughs> yes and they should believe doesn't matter it's amazing or not. <laughs> they have you, you you provide them your confidence and your uh, feelings and they should get it and they should feel the same. Like you say you are so beautiful, no matter what you honestly think. Because beautiful it's a like for me it's one thing beautiful, for another person another thing beautiful. Yeah. We are all beautiful. But even if you think it's not beautiful, if you uh make a gift for this person they will love it they will love uh, the day how they spend they will love experience and for me it's most like a one of the most important things if we're talking about customer service yes and and you know what i i, I agree 100 percent and I, I i i don't know if this is your experience but um i found especially for the last couple of years when i'm just shooting a lot of headshots um, that this is one of the biggest deals which you have to sell to the clients that they have to believe in themselves right like they have to believe what you do because most of people I don't know like if you have that uh, feeling they, they have really low self-esteem like especially I found you know like you working with with so many different clients they they not sure about their looks you know they they have some insecurities and especially during those sessions they all coming out right and you're showing them the photos and as you said like oh i don't like the eyebrow right and where you have like amazing image you have stunning lighting you know the person that looks good and confident and you know like we've done all this work to make them look as good as possible and they pick on this little little tiny thing and they don't see anything else right and then you know what you have said that you know like you have to kind of past this you know this this beauty on them and they have to see it they have to feel it and they have to kind of go with with the kind of like the, with the flow of you know what what we believe they, they should also believe so that's something interesting but, uh, right now i find very very easy way to to be confident on this part okay. like first you have to charge more okay and you charge more another quality of customers coming the the experience expectation different they expect they come to the place where uh, people already buying something expensive so they know 
it's it gonna will be, good. be professionally done. Okay. And no matter what they think, they already know it will be good. Absolutely. Okay. That's and true. And the second thing, uh, I want to say what I want to say for a second. <laughs> I forget, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, when someone coming to me and ask about like, a, hey, eyebrows, hair, something like that, I'm so confident and uh, I tell them, uh, listen, we're doing this not for beautiful shots. You mm-hmm. you can find, I can offer you, referral you uh, a portrait photographer who can create amazing headshot of you with beautiful makeup, with beautiful retouching. But right now we're creating tool for you. And they're okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. No matter how it looks. And yeah. Because people usually they take a look on the mirror every day yeah. and they used to see all minor details. Even I can see it. Like they tell me, oh, my nose curved here. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, it's curved. But who knows? Yeah. <laughs> who cares? Absolutely. It's not about your nose. It's yeah. about your expression, about your energy. Would you provide for uh, thousands of people online and they can, they have to see it. If you think about your nose, like, Let's say if I do this way, yeah. hello, <laughs> yeah. I know it's not my best side, but still, if I be energized, even with this side, it will help me to get my, like to hit my target audience, let's say. Absolutely. So you were mentioning about the retouching thing, and I want to touch this a little bit. Um, so how important retouching is for you? And do you retouch your images yourself? You send them out? Like, what's the process of, of, of that part of creating, you know, headshots? I getting on all the steps from the beginning when okay. I uh, did not retouch, when I would start learning retouching. Right now I know how to do frequency separation, all this stuff. But uh, right now, maybe last three months, four months, okay. I realized and I, I also have before a retoucher, and I still have this guy. I kind of coach him to like uh, to see what I want. Okay. And the idea is four months ago was uh, create the uh, great image. Mm-hmm. And when my idea is changed, right now I don't do almost any retouching. Mm-hmm. So I just like uh, for me, honestly, I'm not a retoucher, but. For me, most complicated part, part like I remove the light from the frame. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And make background even. <laughs> yes. And if somebody have like a so huge red thing, I can remove. If somebody have yellow teeth, and they tell me like, can you make it uh, more white? And I told them, if you like a straight away going to, to teeth whitening, I can do it. But if not, it's not making any sense. Yeah. Keep it like it is. You have to match like. Everything should be matched. And it, when you do retouching, you losing everything. You losing your trust. <laughs> this is huge problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But I like so so there's like I would say I don't know. Um, like I think the retouching is is well it just this, this is my opinion, right? Is um, is required with you know those little things here and there, but you don't want to kind of overdo it that you know like you're completely losing the quality of you know who these people are and stuff like that right uh, but again you know like it's it depends also on the client i found right you know like some people they're okay with the way they look and they don't really care but there's some people and i've been in those situation on like a, like i don't want to say on a daily basis but i had some definitely clients who were like pushing way too much right and they they want me to create something which is not real it's like made up right so but here you have to do educational moment for them and then you have to educate like uh, honestly if someone coming to me and ask like a remove everything from the face uh i'm not building kind of uh like a lot of people they build studio production when someone coming it's all about money wherever it takes to get money from a client and yes get out like for me to lose one client because he won't like a remove everything from the face but uh i don't know i maybe can say i, I i'm sorry here you go this is a retoucher tell him 
whatever you want to do, yeah. I don't care. But my recommendation, keep your face like it is. Yes. Otherwise, nobody don't want to deal with you. Yes. And, if you. and it happens, people, honestly, when someone coming to you, right now my price, my lowest price, 395 for not coaching session. Mm -hmm. And before, when it was like $150, I have the same problems. People coming to do picture. Yes. And right now, people coming to me to do to have a tool. <laughs> yes. And this is different. And so, for me, it's a lot less work too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So how do you deal with those clients? Because, you know, like there's, there's another aspect of this, right? Which I think is extremely important to, to mention that you know sometimes you have those clients who force you like i'm not saying force you but they, they they kind of like they want you to do all this work but then when you create that image this whole thing kind of gonna haunt you one day right because someone will see it and like oh i used that photographer and he just butchered my face you, you know what i mean it's like you have to also kind of keep the quality that you know people who are coming back to you they kind of like know what they can expect right a lot of people uh, photographers, they, uh, they, I don't know, they have kind of stereotype from high-level photographers. Yes. About, I can give you a role because you can put it on billboard and use it, and you will not pay me. For me, if somebody put my work on billboard, I, I, I can pay for them. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Like I don't care. I don't want to. Like, a, if you put your uh, picture on book. It's amazing for me. Yes. It, it's a free advertisement. I don't want to make, I mean, I won't make extra money, but mm -hmm. I don't care. And uh, if, if someone use like a ugly retouching on my images, how many people will see? Like only their friends. It's yeah. not like a huge auditorium. It's somebody will not show it on TV or something. Yeah. And uh, I'm not that popular for losing my uh, kind of sometimes I post something on Instagram by myself what I don't like after a couple of days. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, we all have those. Perfect. So, I, I, yeah, I don't think it's uh, very, very important. Yeah. So now what I would like to do is I'll, I I dig it into your Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, and I pull out five of my favorite images of yours. Um, and what I would like to do, I, I would like to show them to you. And could you give me a little bit of behind the story behind those shots? Just like, you know, just a little bit of information about, you know, how this image was created and, you know, maybe there's some story behind it. So I have five of them and we're going to try to briefly go through all of them. And then, you know, like I would like to kind of hear your opinion. So those are my favorite ones and they just absolutely stunning. Um, so if you could just tell me about this image. Uh, actually, <clears throat> uh, I have an office and uh, it's kind of, right now I'm in my home studio. And okay. I moved to Tampa. Okay. I used to live in Bradenton, Sarasota. It's like a one hour away from here. Okay. And I have a studio there and office for my construction company. Okay. And uh, when I went there, this guy coming to, uh, to get new job for handyman work. Okay. <laughs> and when I saw him, I said, hey guys, let's jump. It was two guys. Let's jump and I will take a picture. And it was like a, maybe five shots. Oh, wow. Okay. One of these shots, I got this. And uh, I like it too. It's one of my favorite shots. Yeah, the, the, there's yeah, there's so much into this. Um, the face expression, the lighting. Um, but I, I, I think it, the, the connection between him and the camera is just striking. Like, you cannot take your eyes off that image. Like, it's, it's really connected to you. So it's pretty cool. But okay. again, it's mostly like a, a artistic work. Yes. I, I would say. It's not, it's, not, it's not a tool. Because it's not provided. You're not, you think it's kind of maybe famous guy or something. Or it's not provided any personality yes it's provide something deeper because people like that like homeless people mm -hmm. they have a very very deep eye they look at you like a you can take mark martin schiller yes he mostly shooting uh 
homeless people because they have a lot of experience in their lives. Yes. And they uh, look so deep. And that's cool, yeah. create this kind of uh, atmosphere when you look at the picture. Yes. Well, the, the, you know, yeah, they're definitely... Um, the face can tell the story, right? Um, yes. And, and, that's, I've, and, and, and you know what? That's what I, I'm so inspired and I'm so into headshots because, you know, you can see in people's faces stories, right? And that yeah. I, I also found, like, you know, whenever you have a photo shoot that they're sharing those stories with you and you can see those things in their in their faces, you know, that's, that's what kind of makes this job so uh, amazing. Uh, but you know that image is one of those shots where you know like you look at this guy and like I just want I would love to talk to him and hear his life story yeah. right <laughs> so that's okay so let's jump to the next one I, I didn't yeah. fire. <laughs> no 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 well well yeah you're right but but yeah. you've done you know you you actually uh, put like I don't know the story but you know like you definitely Put that in his face and the image is just striking right so um yeah like it, it's really it's, uh, yeah I'm, i was just blown away i was just looking at this image and i'm just like holy smokes that's 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 really good like you know Thank you. And, and 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 you know what another thing is like it, and i think that's what is amazing about this industry um that sometimes people say like oh it's just a headshot but as I said, this again, I'm just repeating myself a million times, I guess. Um, even with just the simple headshots, we can create something which, you know, has the story, has the vibe, has the emotions and all this stuff, right? Um, and I think because also of, of Peter Harley, he he definitely pushed this to, to, to total another level where you know like we, we we've learned from him and I'm, I'm one of them you know like i'm, I'm a his huge inspiration of mine and I, I absolutely love his work and the fact he took this to another level and allow us to kind of open new doors to creating something so unique and so different and um it, it's just kind of amazing so okay so let's jump into the next image tell me about this one <laughs> Okay. One of the stuff. Cool. So, like, you guys just because uh, this was just like a, some type of workshop, right? Like he was doing, and you guys were just shooting different people. Actually, it was a uh, hundred fifty headshot photographers okay. around the world, and uh, we have a uh, three days classes. Okay. Competition okay. between headshot photographers. Okay. And uh, the I won flex uh, kit over there. <laughs> Holy smokes, okay. So, uh... Oh, you really know how to do the business, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm just the... gonna go there and win this and win that. And <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Okay, so let's jump to the next one. Uh, let's talk about this image. I really love this one, too. It was in Headshot Mania as well. Okay. <laughs> it was a quick shot. Less than five minutes. So what did you win with this one? The camera uh, and, and lens? <laughs> no, it was just one price on Headshot Mania. Okay. On the end, you have to create new portfolio. Okay. And uh, all these people, they're creating portfolio and mentors, they will pick the best ones. And okay. from the best ones, uh, I was with uh, Norman Gillette. Okay, I know Norman. I met, I met the, him in, in Houston, actually. Well, a month ago, yeah. He was on third place. Oh, okay. Uh, second place was uh, Justin uh, Zur. Okay. From Netherlands, and okay. uh, I was the first. Okay. So you just nail it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, at the same day they have like a small prizes about like a, the best uh, staff picture, the best smiley picture. I don't remember. It oh, okay. like a... it's like a different categories. Yeah, and uh, in the last day I won all four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I talk about well, you know, the, the the one person who mentioned your name um, was I, I know you know him really well, Chris Chris Gillette, mm -hmm. and 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 he he's, he he spoke so highly of you, and then he's like mm -hmm. he's so good. I'm just like well, I've seen his work, so like yeah, he's like amazing. But he he like he was really impressed. Well, he I mean, he still is so impressed with your work, and um, like I think 
you. you're like I don't also I don't want to know if inspiration but like like he's got so much respect for your work and, and everything what you do um, awesome. so okay so let's jump to the next one this is a makeup artist okay and she's my neighbor <laughs> oh okay that's good okay so she's a very very good makeup artist well I can I can I can say that yeah and but but also no, the images. No, no, no retouching on this image. Okay. Like very, very, like maybe minor. Okay. Hair or something, but the face it look like it is. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a stunning image. Okay, and the last one is this one. This is in Headshot Mania too. It's okay. a headshot photographer from Qatar. Okay. Oh. He uh, has amazing. Uh, energy i love it it's one of my favorite pictures i actually have it uh have it on my wall too oh it smokes okay <laughs> so i picked the right one hey <laughs> yeah. okay so i have a couple more questions for you and then um yeah we should be we should be done so so my next question is what would be your advice to you know someone who is starting off um being a headshot photographer like what what would you tell to someone and you basically what i would like to also ask you to um if you could just kind of look based on your experiences and your journey if you would kind of go back to the time when you were starting off what would be that advice to you would just maybe give to yourself even you know uh, before you jump into this headshot wagon <laughs> If you want to make money, if you're thinking about business, like a headshot, it's a business. I definitely, before you nail your pictures, I definitely recommend you join any uh, networking groups mm -hmm. and uh, to do networking. It's a first, doesn't matter how good you are. Nobody on networking not asking you, hey, <clears throat> maybe very rarely, but hey, show me your stuff. Mostly, you have to build the trust with people. And when you build the trust, it takes you around six, maybe nine months. And uh, for this time period, you have a time to nail your work. And when you have a first customers from your networking, you can already be good enough. <laughs> yes. It's the one thing. Second thing, a lot of headshot photographers, they shy or they think I'm not photogenic by themselves, but they should understand. It's not about photogenic. It's not about yourself. You have to, uh, you have to get nice headshot. Doesn't matter who, who they are. Like, if, if for example, I think I'm not photogenic, and uh, how I can take a picture of another people? Yes. Like, just based on my taste. <laughs> if somebody yeah. not very likable coming to you, what you have to do? No, I can't do it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do another You're one. not photogenic, sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the biggest thing, how I learned, honestly, I mean, I watch the Peter sh shoots, I watch another people shoots, and uh, like, uh, I just repeat it. I just repeat catch catch lights, for example, when I did lights, I I take a picture, like I take a screenshot from uh, Peter work, mm -hmm. make it closer. <laughs> so the cage lights open capture one shoot myself and re try repeat the angles and everything on cage lights mm -hmm. and then I, when i go back i'm like oh yeah it's similar <laughs> yeah it's, it's working <laughs> then I, figure, I figure out like uh, how it works you know i i i'm not just in, just staying with my mouse and shoot the same thing a hundred thousand times and every time like i change something change lights change position i'm experimenting a lot and I recommend you to shoot yourself, you like a free mannequin. I, I bought, on the beginning, I bought mannequin and then try to use mannequin, for example, but it doesn't work. Yeah. You are the best mannequin. <laughs> yes. True. So. Okay, so my last question to you is, what impact do you want to make on headshot photography? Because you already make huge impact, you know, with, with a lot of stuff, what you have done. But what's your ultimate goal? Like, what, what would you, what would you like to leave behind? Right now, uh, I get step by step by myself. Mm -hmm. 
from the beginning and uh, I learned, uh, I mean, I have a lot of problems where I can get customers. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of problems like uh, how to create this quality and uh, right now I want to create something for another people uh, to get customers, not only one-time deal customers. Mm -hmm. I want to create recurring service for people and coach other photographers how to make monthly base income and be stable. Yes. Otherwise, it's like a handyman work when you go up and down, up and down. Yeah. But if you got, let's say, uh, five customers and each one pay you 2500 per month, and you work with them at least one year, this is amazing. <laughs> yes. Because then they will bring you another customers. Yeah. You don't need to spend any money for anything <laughs> on yeah. the beginning. That's true. Yeah. That's a good advice. Um, and, and I think, you know what, we're all on the same boat because, you know, the stuff what you just have said, I like, I'm, I'm on the same page with you, you know, like how you can build this, the structure, right, which kind of can be sustainable and you can maintain this and you can have a little bit of control. It's not like, and then this is kind of my experience. Like, you know, I have a week where you have like, say 20 photo shoots and then you have a week where we have like completely nothing, right? Yeah. And then you just start freaking out and you just like, okay, like people don't and love my work and you know, like you're just putting this crap in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the problem is right now, like a whole headshot photo or any photographers they learning and they becoming marketing people they yeah. becoming seo people i don't want to learn seo i don't want to learn marketing honestly i mean i know some some stuff but i don't want to go deep if i want to because i will lose my quality of my work yeah. if i start learning another thing instead yeah. of be good good photographer yeah that's but, that's so yeah. true yeah <laughs> and that's why uh, I want to create something when people will not thinking about how to get leads. They will do step by step exactly what, like, a, you know, you read, like, a, you have to do, like, a one uh, exposition per month. Mm -hmm. And you, if you will do it, or in, in other steps, you will have 100% customers, but also these customers will be not just one-time deal customers. They will, it will be like a, somebody jump to you and they, they will stay with you and maybe stay for a very long time, more yes. than one year. Yeah. And then you, you can, because right now I have a handyman and I have a cleaning service. Mm -hmm. My wife should take care about cleaning service more. And the, like a, when you build the recurring customers, it, you, you can just build up, you know. Mm -hmm. Every month you know how much money you will make. Yes. And then you add one more, you make more add more you make more yes <laughs> but then happy. like you know you still have to build that that structure right it's not like this is gonna come by itself uh, that's that's what i found but i also think and i'm sure this is what you what you just actually mentioned a few few seconds ago about uh, we have to do everything right like you have to do photography you have to do marketing you have to do business you have to do taxes you know in some cases like you have to look over all those stuff and then you know it seems like photography becoming this like just a little tiny portion of the, what do we have to do um and how we can expand this just to so i can focus on photography like 100 percent and don't worry about all this other crap right which you have to deal with on a daily basis um, and that's what it's frustrating i find i found it's very really funny all headshot photographers told for the customers hey you have to find professional you have to hire professional headshot photographer but they not hire professional SEO people. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> it's the same thing. If you want a result, you have to have professionals who will take care about your thing very well. Yeah. Otherwise, you will be with fear about I do it right or not. You will spend your valuable time for it. You know. That's. I find, yeah. I find that it's very important to do like what you do and nail it. Yes. Otherwise, well... you can be on the middle somewhere not there and not there yeah yeah well but that's what most photographers have to deal with right like i have this kind of interesting conversation um the other day um on one of the groups um someone just just shoot me actually uh kind of really interesting comment and um 
I started a little bit thinking about it because it's like, well, your work look kind of the same. You do like the headshots and nothing else, right? And how you kind of sustain this whole thing when you're doing the same thing over and over again. And the, 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 another portion of that question was like, um, what exactly what I want to say that, you know, if the client comes in and let's say I do headshots, right? And they, they want to, let's say portraits or they want a landscape or they want a product photography, right? Um, so usually I refer them to someone else, like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take that on. Uh, but I found there's most of photographers nowadays, or there's like a little small group. Like what I, what I mean by that is like, there's a small group of photographers who like specialize in one thing and they just they do one thing only. Um, and they don't do everything, right? Cause I don't, I don't invite clients who like, they come in with anything, right? Like, you know what I mean is like, if someone comes in like, okay, I have this, I don't know, like product things, which I want to take photos. Like, I'm not going to shoot that. Like, just sorry, like I, I do headshots. Uh, but I found that most photographers nowadays to survive and kind of keep it going, they do everything and nothing. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, there's yeah, no... The, 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 the problem is if you, say, if you say we do networking and you're on networking event and somebody asks you, like, uh, what kind of referrals you're looking for? Like, uh, what people you, what your target market? And if you stand up and say, hey, I'm looking for everything and uh, anytime. Yes. <laughs> it, it means zero. Yeah, it means nothing. Yeah. But if you said, I'm looking like for a plastic surgeon and uh, his customers and his name, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, people will understand who you are, what you're looking for, and they will give it to you. Absolutely. But Otherwise, you have nothing. And uh, I experienced the same thing. I I shot some product stuff, and uh, I'm I'm not the friend, but I can create the quality picture because when you learn on headshots, we will say uh, the quality of headshots. You can you're able to provide good quality any pictures. Yes, because it's very very related. It's very close. You learn lights. You learn the quality like a white balance you learn how yeah. to uh, not make it super contrasty you know on, on the beginning a lot of people they try pull contrast up and it yes. feels and looks not the quality of picture yes but the, you know the question becomes kind of the same right like you know as you said like i do everything and nothing right on it means nothing for uh, a lot of people if I say I do like a construction for you, what it means? I can build the houses or I can just uh, fix the blinds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but that's kind of... Um, what you're looking for. Yeah, I will do anything. Just tell me, right? <laughs> yeah, it means like a so nothing. Yeah, but what that's mean? yeah, that, that's kind of Europe. I don't know if you... But that's like the country where I'm coming from. You know, when yes, we had those people... Do everything. Yeah, yeah. There was always this one guy in, in the village, right? Who like... Yes. <laughs> if you have any issues, you go to this guy right yeah yes in russia it's the same uh, and uh, before i when i uh, when i came when somebody asked what you can do i said everything yeah <laughs> i can, I'm able to do everything i believe yeah. that i know i can learn new stuff yeah. like when i start doing construction by myself somebody give me like hey you have to do and do these things and i go and open youtube <laughs> yeah. I watch how to do it and then I do it. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I did this first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no warranty on, that, on ever, anything what I do, hey? Yeah, and people are able to learn everything. Yes. I, when, I do, when I was a professional go kart racer, I coached uh, in other kids and adults how to race fast. And I know 100%, like 99% people can learn. and you can yes. drive fast but that takes own. practice right you know yes, it's, it's just practice and the how you learn like the way way you learn if you learn from uh the best let's say you learn it in in good way yes for sure so learn from best and you will be fine absolutely <laughs> thank you so much Vanu, for uh thank this this, this cool me. cool chat i i hope we will have a chance to chat again uh, in in i don't know short period yeah. of time um i really enjoy this 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 chat you know like you just put completely different light on this entire industry and i, I really appreciate that you know you are sharing all this information because you know they're, they're really valuable and i think you know like 
the more I talk to different people, they just kind of expanding how interesting this 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 industry is, and you know how many different things you can bring to the table to 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 discuss. You know, like for some people, just the headshots, right? So so I, I really appreciated your time, and um, yeah, like sorry sorry for sorry for taking your Sunday Saturday morning. No, um, okay. And um, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, um, the last thing what I want to also ask you, um, where people can find you online? You have a website, you are on social media. I will link all this stuff below anyways, so people can kind of like track you down. And then I highly recommend it to everyone to check uh, your work because it's absolutely stunning. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully people- I have a YouTube channel when I uh, create some tips for photographers okay. and uh, they can check it there okay uh, you have a website instagram for your, you have a website right? so .com. okay perfect awesome the best one <laughs> oh, okay and they, they they can kind of go from there right because there's there's all this other information where they can find you yes. and stuff. awesome thank you so much i would like to wish you fantastic uh weekend and um yes, thank sir. you again that was extremely valuable you know conversation and um yeah thank you again awesome thank you bye guys